opportunity to work on the things you do best, 29% improvement of performance. So people are obviously at their best when they are playing in position, doing the stuff they were created to do. But one of the challenges sometimes in organizations is people say things like, you know, well, you're good at this, but you need to work on that. Now, the problem with that is that people are not creative rounded, right? They're creative with strengths and corresponding weaknesses. So try this precise. Best sales guy is always the worst guy admin. They're not complementary skills, right? You can send that person on as many admin training courses as you like and five years from now, still be garbage at it. So you don't teach a pig to sing, it's a waste of time and it annoys the pig. So actually what we wanna do is play people in position and then support them in their weaknesses, right? So with the great sales team, you know, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you an administrator and we're gonna set you a higher sales target to pay for the administrator. What do you think? Well, they're gonna bite your hand off for it. And so trying to play people out of position is sort of a road to nowhere. Um, and everyone understands this instinctively in a sporting analogy, because like nobody would say to Ronaldo, oh, Ronaldo, you're incredible up front, it's breathtaking, you can score from anywhere, but your goalkeeping is hopeless, you know? So develop the goalkeeping, you'll be the complete player, you know? It would never happen. But in organizations, people do that sometimes. And interestingly, when you play people out of position, you lose twice. Because now I've lost Ronaldo as a striker and I've got a terrible goalkeeper. So when you play people out of position, you lose twice, not once. And so the, the answer to roundness is a team. What you want is a blend and diverse team where my strengths match your weaknesses and together we have everything. And the interesting thing as well is, if I don't play people in position, how can I give them praise? See, if, if, I, if I play people out of position, I'm not gonna be able to find anything very positive to say. So the facilitator or enabler of praise, which we've been talking about, is first of all, to play people in position. This is a really critical thing. They're a bit of a double act, those two. And incidentally, where is there more room for growth, strengths or weaknesses? Well, it looks like weaknesses, but actually the reverse is the case. True weakness. And I'm, to I'm not talking about people who have not had a chance to try yet. You know, somebody tries something new, they can do that too. Fantastic. I'm talking about the person who's had a go, struggling, had some training, not getting it, had another go, not getting it. You know, there's a pattern there. And so the, the big thing is, if that's a core part of their job, they're in the wrong job. You need to release them mercifully. It's not a core part of the job to get, get somebody else to do it. But, but the key thing here is the room for growth in an area of strength is almost unlimited. And it's a big missed opportunity where we think, you know, they're good at that, but they need to work on this. No, they're good at that. Let's make them world class at it. That's where the bigger opportunity actually lies.